Much like the itinerant folk musicians of the 18th and 19th centuries that fascinated Margaret Kilgallen, the artist herself had a penchant for wanderlust. Following trains from town to town and between her exhibitions, Margaret had a passion for studying the local color, the tall tales, and the everyday lives and pursuits of regular Americans. Rustic main streets of little towns with their mom and pop stores were ripe for exploration, all inspiration and fuel for her art. These trips, as well as local fairs, flea markets, and auctions, provided glimpses into the folk traditions of the U.S. I have always had an admiration for things that are well-made, or not even well-made, what you have to make in order to live, Kilgallen explained. A key figure in San Francisco's mission school scene, which also included Kilgallen's husband, Barry McGee, friends Chris Johansson, Ruby Neri, and others, Kilgallen shared with the group a passion for surf and skate culture, punk and independent music, craft and folk art. While this assembly of artist friends all had varying degrees of studio instruction, they possessed a common fascination with the naive arts and crafts, often made anonymously. This type of artwork retained its humanity, rough around the edges and honest. The world was only given a scant few years to know Margaret Kilgallen. She passed away on June 26, 2001, having delivered her first and only child, Asha, just 19 days prior. At only 33, Margaret had succumbed to complications from breast cancer. To hear directly from her friends and family, Margaret's was the flame that burned brightest. The tragedy of her death can sometimes eclipse how very vibrant and alive she was in life, the kind and noble friend she was, though this is clearly visible in her art. Margaret Kilgallen's presence lives on through the power of her work, the inspiration it has and continues to provide. Kilgallen's work contains so many things we feel like we've encountered before, drawn from our own commonplace travels and experiences. Everything adds up to a shared memory. At times, her work looks like a scrapbook featuring the objects and moments Margaret collected. Reconsidered, recontextualized, balanced, overlapping, stacking upon each other. These pieces of the past could have just as easily been sourced from the pages of a Faulkner novel as they could have been from a thrift store in western Pennsylvania or a surf shack in the East Bay. Poetry can be found in the rhythm and arrangement of the seemingly random text that is scattered about her work, antiquated terms and forgotten nomenclature from earlier eras and clandestine pursuits, coupled with a color palette of bright reds and mellow greens influenced by Indian miniature paintings. Consigned by the original owner, Untitled Blinded Fate from 1998 was originally purchased from the beloved Luggage Store Gallery, a nonprofit art space in San Francisco. The work was later featured in the 2005 CalArts Theater Red Cat retrospective in the Sweet By and By, as well as the recent retrospective, That's Where the Beauty Is, both at the Aspen Art Museum, as well as the exhibition's second stop at the Cleveland MoCA. The work is made up of four differently sized panels clustered together, but not attached to each other. Each wood panel has soft, rounded corners with finishing nails running along the perimeter, as often seen in Kilgallen's work. A little red bird is perched atop the upper left corner like the tip of an antique weather vane. A portrait of a young woman sits at upper right, her head within a shape that recalls both an illuminated manuscript as well as the numerical flags that would pop up on the sort of brass cash register one might find at a soda fountain or general store. Enveloping the bird at upper left, the word blinded sits within rolling black hills, topped by silhouettes of two bending trees, the typography akin to what Margaret had employed periodically for her graphic design projects. Anchoring the bottom is the largest panel of the four, FATE, with FAT in all caps and the little letter E shoved to the side. Margaret's iconic red is propped up by a black drop shadow, giving the letters dimension. These elements are not fragments that add up to a whole, but more a grouping of somewhat disparate objects, like a collection in a curio cabinet. When presented together, there is some cryptic narrative, some unknowable reason Kilgallen felt they belonged together, possibly recalling a moment or a memory. While her work is very personal and at times precious and sentimental, Kilgallen was also a force. She lived with purpose and knew full well what behavior she would not accept from others. Margaret lived and created in rejection of any elitism, always inquisitive, adventurous, supportive, overly generous, and fully participatory in her community. Margaret's patience was not meekness, but an uncompromising stoicism.